Hello everyone, my name is Steven. I'm a PhD student in the Operations Research Department at Columbia University. Today I'll be talking about my paper titled Dynamic Pricing and Learning Under the BAS Model. Uh, this is joint work with my uh, advisor, Shifra Agrawal, and the soft CV. Uh, so I'm going to start the presentation with talking a little bit about the main motivation of our project, which is based on this observation um, that the demand of a product is influenced by uh, what we call the word of mouth effect. And in particular, we're going to be using a uh, dynamic demand model called Bass Diffusion Model, uh, which captures this word of mouth effect very nicely. Um, and then I'm going to present sort of the main problem of our project, uh, which is doing dynamic pricing um, under this Bass model when the parameters of the Bass model are unknown. And then, you know, at the end, I'll present the main results of our algorithm uh, of our project, uh, which are a upper bound um, on regret as well as a matching lower bound. So uh, the problem of dynamic pricing on their uncertain demand has been studied widely. Uh, so in the beginning, the community started with uh, mostly independent and stationary demand models, which means that uh, the relationship between demand and price are uh, the same over different rounds, and the realization of demand has no influence over the future demand. And then the community moved on to contextual demand models, which uh, make the models a lot more expressive, but they're still stationary. And then more recently, uh, people have started studying non-stationary demand models. Uh, and our paper falls into this fourth category, where we study a non-stationary demand model, but the non-stationarity uh, is described by a structure model, which allows us to prove uh, better regret bounds. So uh, as mentioned before, the main motivation of our project is to study this well-known word of mouth effect, which basically says popular products get even more popular. Um, in particular, the popularity, the demand of a product is driven by uh, two factors. External uh, factor uh, basically means uh, the intrinsic quality of a product, as well as a internal factor, which is basically driven by uh, the social influences of existing adopters of the product. And as products get more uh, adopters, um, the uh, the word of mouth effect will get stronger, and therefore the relationship between price and demand will change over time. And so intuitively, um, if you think word of mouth effect is real, then it might make sense to uh, offer a lower price in the beginning so that you can acquire a lot of adopters quickly. And they will in turn help you with uh, advertising your product to the remaining market. So um, we have looked at um, some empirical investigations on new product reviews on Amazon, as well as new answers for different questions on Stack Overflow. And what we saw was that uh, for um, questions that initially got a lot of answers, uh, we'll get even more answers over time. And we also uh, did the same thing for a uh, data set from an online retailer. And what we saw was that um, the cumulative adoption curve exhibits, exhibits this S-shaped uh, shape and um, BAS model which is in red, uh, is able to capture this S shape very nicely, whereas the traditional stationary demand models were not. So what is the BAS model? Uh, BAS model uh, in the BAS model, we assume that there is a market size M, which is the total number of potential buyers, as well as the time horizon T. Um, and then the main two parameters are coefficient of innovation which represents the intrinsic quality of the product and coefficient of imitation, which represents the word of mouth effect. And so let XT be the fraction market that's already uh, adopted the product. Then the BAS model says that the rate of change of this fraction is given by the following expression. So if you look on the right, um, it ha basically has three parts. E raised minus P says that you know the higher the price, the smaller the demand, which makes sense. 
And then the second part is alpha times one minus XT, which is the remaining market. And that is basically sales due to uh, external influence or innovation. And then the last part is beta multiplied by XT, which is the current fraction of adopters and the remaining market. And that represents sales due to internal influence or imitation. And the total revenue uh, can be written as uh, integration of price over the entire uh, adoption curve. And so under the deterministic BAS model, uh, and also assuming that alpha beta parameters are known, uh, people have already studied what the optimal thing to do is here. And the optimal price curve is uh, shown on the screen here, which is kind of complicated, but the main takeaway here is that um, it's not an optimal price, but rather an optimal price curve, which means that you actually want to offer different prices at different time. And um, so it's a non-stationary model. Uh, it's a non-stationary price curve. Uh, and uh, so, you know, on, in, in the, so, so the takeaway here is that even in the deterministic model, the optimal uh, price curve is already pretty uh, complicated. Um, but obviously, we actually are working with a, the stochastic version of the VAST model where we actually don't know what the alpha beta parameters are. And the model here is basically the same as before, except uh, the arrival process of adopters, instead of being continuous and deterministic, now uh, they basically follow a non-homogeneous Poisson arrival process, where um, the rate of this arrival process uh, is the same as before, given by the BAS model. Um, so the main uh, metric that we use to measure the performance of an algorithm is uh, this concept of regret, which is the difference between the optimal expected revenue under the stochastic BAS model and the revenue that we collect. And the main results are basically a matching m risk due to the upper and lower bound on the regrets. So how do we uh, design an algorithm? So um, one of the key lemmas that we uh, use in the paper is uh, this one, which shows that the optimal expected revenue under the stochastic BAS model is upper bounded by the optimal revenue in the deterministic BAS model. And this is helpful because this kind of tells us that uh, we should maybe try to imitate the optimal price curve under the deterministic BAS model, which, as you recall from two slides ago, has a expression that we already know. Uh, so that's basically our algorithmic approach. Uh, we try to estimate the parameters of the BAS model, and then we imitate the deterministic uh, pricing policy. So more concretely, our algorithm has an exploratory price P0, and we offer this exploratory price uh, for the first unraised to two-third customers, and we use those unraised to two-third uh, data points to obtain a estimation of the parameter alpha as well as the confidence bound. And then the algorithms um, uh, proceed in epochs, and these epochs basically divide the market into inc geometrically increasing sizes. Um, and within each epoch, the algorithm again offers this exploratory price, P0, for the first unraised two-third customers. And then we use those data points to update the estimation for the beta parameter. And then for the remainder of that epoch, we offer a lower confidence bound on the deterministic price, uh, a deterministic optimal price. And yeah, so our main result uh, was to show that this algorithm um, uh, achieve uh, this m raised to two-third regret with probably one minus delta. And one interesting thing to note here is that the bound does not depend on T, uh, which is typically what you see in other online learning and dynamic pricing papers. And the main reason is just that um, here in our setting, uh, the information comes with customer arrivals, not with time. And therefore, M kind of measures the number of decision points that we have, um, uh, which is the main driver of the regrets. And so to prove our upper bound, um, the first step is, uh, like we mentioned, uh, to relax sort of the regret uh, to the difference between the deterministic optimal uh, revenue and the revenue that we collect. 
And since the deterministic optimal revenue is an upper bound of stochastic optimal revenue, um, having an upper bound on the uh, deterministic regret uh, is enough to get a uh, upper bound on the stochastic regret. Um, and step two is to show that our estimators for the alpha beta parameters are accurate. Um, and as you can see here, the beta estimator has an extra one over gamma i term in the confidence bound. And that is the reason why we need to uh, keep updating the beta estimation over different epochs, whereas we actually don't update the alpha estimator um, after uh, we calculated it in the very beginning. Um, and then so using this confidence bounds, uh, we can actually show that uh, uh, the regret we incur in each epoch is bounded by m raised to two-thirds. Um, and then we can also show that because we're offering lower confidence bound on the prices, uh, our final adoption uh, number of adopters is at least as much as uh, what's uh, uh, at least as much as in the optimal deterministic trajectory. And so if you combine all of these steps together, you can show that um, we have at most m raised to two-thirds regrets. So for lower bound, uh, we uh, show that uh, for any alpha beta, if your planning horizon is within this range of roughly 1 over alpha plus beta, then for any algorithm, there exists another uh, market uh, characterized by a different set of parameters, alpha prime, beta prime, um, that's, at, that's within this range, um, such that your algorithm has a expected regret um, that's at least m raised to two thirds on the order of m raised to two thirds for one of these markets. And uh, what's interesting here is that like it's highlighting that the most difficult uh, part uh, range of problems for this, uh, sorry, the most difficult uh, setting for this problem um, is when the planning horizon is within this one over alpha plus beta range. And that's pretty intuitive because when your planning horizon is super small, then basically you're, uh, you're never going to get a lot of adopters. And therefore, the state in your BAS model, which is the fraction of adopters, uh, will not change much, uh, which means that your problem essentially reduces to a stationary demand model uh, problem. And therefore, the problem is much easier. And on the other hand, when t is very large, uh, because you have so much time, you don't have to think very hard about dynamically changing your price. You can just set the price to a very high level, and then you'll eventually capture almost all the market anyway. So how do we prove the lower bound? Um, step one is uh, kind of similar to what we did in the upper bound. Here we show that the deterministic uh, optimal revenue uh, not only is the upper bound on the deterministic stochastic revenue, but the gap between the, these two cannot be too large. In particular, it cannot be uh, bigger than square root m. And then step two, uh, we show that for uh, uh, the difference between the deterministic optimal revenue and the revenue we collect, we can actually um, express this gap as cumulative pricing errors. Um, so this step is actually a priori not obvious because um, you know if you offer a lower price, uh, sure you lose some revenue uh, uh, in the present, but then what you gain is that you're saving some time because lower price corresponds to uh, you know faster arrival rates, and with this additional time you might be able to uh, get more adopters at the end. Uh, so step two is very crucial, and then step three we basically use an information theoretic argument to say that. Uh, no algorithm can distinguish uh, the two markets that we described uh, in the previous slide with constant probability unless you have observed at least unreached two-third adoptions. Uh, and this step is also intuitive because if you have not, if the total number of adopters in the market is uh, very low, then you don't expect to see a lot of word of mouth effects because there's no one to you know spread the word yet, and therefore you cannot measure distinguish two markets that have very different word of mouth effects. 
And then the last step is to show that um, for these two markets, uh, the optimal prices are very different. And so if you combine all of these steps, um, you can show that uh, for the first average to two third customers, you are going to offer a price that's at least constant away from the optimal um, with constant probability. So using step two, you can show that you will incur at least uh, on the order of MRA's two-third regret. Okay, so to recap, uh, we proposed a novel formulation of the dynamic pricing problem uh, using uh, the BAS model, um, where unlike a most existing uh, literature, uh, the prices that you offer uh, in the present can have long-term impact on future demand. And in our setting, the optimal uh, pricing policy is non-stationary. So to obtain our results, we use the fact that we are able to bound um, the optimal deterministic revenue in the deterministic BAS model and the optimal expected revenue in the stochastic BAS model. And we offered a and we designed an algorithm that basically imitates the deterministic optimal price curve uh, in the stochastic BAS model. Um, and the results were that we were able to show that our algorithm achieves MRA's two-third regret bound uh, with high probability, and that um, uh, for time horizons that's within this constant range, um, this is the optimal regret that you're able to achieve. And uh, so that's it for this paper. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.